So, good evening. Um, I'm going to bed in a minute. It's half past one. I had a nap earlier. Uh, been a busy weekend. We went out again on the Halloween and we had this zombie run thing where it, the matter was full of teens, which is quite funny because most of the time we don't see many teens um, because most of the people are over 60. But it, there was like people hunting each other, uh, which was nice. Uh, teens seemed to have a lot of fun. But anyway, just want to talk about a few things. First thing is, where's the channel going? It's a big question for me. Um, I have to admit, with being busy with other stuff, I was quite happy we're not spending so much time on YouTube. But I was also aware of how much time I was using on YouTube when I could be doing things that actually was more productive. Um, so I've sort of questioned whether it's worth me spending more time on this stuff because I have better things. Well, it's a, it's a wrong thing to say, better things to do. I would say I have other things to do um, because I'm looking at doing a degree at the moment. Uh, so I could actually start moving more time onto study time. I also look at a lot of the topics we've covered um, like the Philippines and I'm starting to see well we've covered many subjects and I've had some people go oh yeah but you, uh, you your stuff's out of date blah blah stupid is not out of date um, because most of the stuff I talk about is common sense things and whatever way you cut it they're still there the same issues are still there um, the bullet in the bag thing is still a problem Duterte is dealing with it at the moment but it's currently still there the people that have relationship issues with being whipped up by a girlfriend, a wife, online scamming, etc. They're still there. So the point is, that sort of argument is a pointless one. Because the fact is, most of it is relevant. Um, if you're talking about cost of living in the Philippines, I would actually say, from the people I've spoken to, um, their cost of living is relative to what I spend in Spain. Um, <coughs> that hasn't changed that much. I would also say, though, those relying on pensions from overseas, uh, from the UK, particularly, yeah, UK, UK, <laughs> UK particularly, um, the exchange rate's down by about 20%. So they're feeling the pinch. Um, myself, I've left money in the UK. I know I've covered videos before, um, sh you know, I've shown that I've got some cash here and I've got money in the bank here and stuff. I don't need to transfer any money this year. Um, I'm okay for another probably about 10 to 12 months. Um, so any income I'm making in the UK, I'm leaving there. Um, I'm paying tax on it. I'm transferring my tax to Spain, but the income will remain in the UK currently because the exchange rates are so poor. Um, but this gets on to another point. Somebody was asking why don't buy, don't buy a house straight away. The reason being, the cost of housing doesn't make sense to me. You've got to remember, this is an alleged slump and will retain this slump. The problem you've got in Spain is they're still building, building new houses. Hong Kong has high housing prices because they lock in the building so they don't construct out of the rest of Hong Kong. So it artificially inflates the price of housing. London could actually build more on the green belt, for example, but it doesn't because it's protected sites. Spain has plenty of land. It's one thing Spain has in abundance, is land. And the problem you get is like, say this apartment we're living in, it's worth between 80 and 100,000 euros, but they're building new ones a bit further back, which are costing, for a studio, 100 and, I think it's about, just call it 100,000, nearly 100,000, might be 80, it might be 100. Because obviously, if you have some alterations, it'll come up to about 100 anyway. Um, but the point being is, the older properties, the market's not moved. Um, what you're finding is, a lot of people haven't reduced the price by, say, 5% to get the deal done. 
and the new properties have in-house financing and all this sort of stuff but then when i look at the banks the banks have got i don't know how many houses they're trying to sell themselves so they have so much debt in these properties that they won't reduce the costs so the whole market is artificially inflated there's over a million houses that are empty um so you sit there going well what's the point of investing now this gets on to some figures <laughs> um the first thing you've got if you're a resident you get 30 percent um uh, sorry if you you get 20 percent deposit uh, if you're buying a house for your mortgage you gotta put 20 percent down if you're a non-resident it's 30 percent this is with the savadell bank so the property i like um is ninety thousand euros Ninety thousand. so it's ninety thousand euros so we'll divide that by a hundred and because people are having issues with it getting residency and stuff lately we'll times that by the 30 percent so to move in i need twenty seven thousand but it's not twenty seven thousand it's twenty seven thousand plus ten percent for the government so that's another th nine thousand so because they take ten percent tax and um, so that's nine thousand plus twenty seven thousand we're now up to thirty six and a half thousand we're now going to add another five thousand in fees and insurance and all the other bits that the banks tie you into initially and we're up to forty one thousand so for a ninety thousand euro property it's going to cost me forty one thousand euros up front now this is why i have an issue with it because my investments give me 10.5 percent return um let's just call it 10 percent because it's easier to work with so at 10 percent that would give me just take a zero off the end 41 000, uh, 4100 euros a year income my rent is 3600 so if i took the same money and put it in the bank account and just left it uh, sorry my investments and just left it i'd actually be financially better off by not buying but the other side of this being is when you get this you give the bank the forty-one thousand and the, all the expenses the fees and everything else um you then have the other issue that you're paying about 360 to 400 euros a month mortgage and you've worked out your forty-one thousand. so you've got sixty thousand euros left to pay off 60, yeah, 60,000 to pay off, uh, nearly 400 euros a month, and you're out of pocket. But if I just put this in the investments, which is what I'm doing, um, quite simply, I'm rent free. Not only rent free, the amount increases by, I think it's 58 euros and 76 cents a month. A month. So it's going up by nearly 60 euros a month, the actual interest um but on top of that you get the rolling interest because obviously once people pay it back the next month it goes out on another loan um this is why i turn around and go i can't justify it at the minute uh once i get to a point where i've got excess in there then say for example if i got it to fifty thousand, and then said okay we'll get a mortgage but i want to try and make sure that any money that we buy the mortgage with doesn't impact the savings um this is why when somebody giving a bit of crab mentality about i don't know why you didn't bought a wife a house yet um that's why it doesn't make any bloody sense um because some people are oh, your house your castle and all that sort of stuff whatever um until we get spanish citizenship we're not legally um spanish citizens um once april and kids are spanish citizens then by that time i am sure we'd already moved into something bigger but the big problem i have is la Mata's really nice but most of the properties are for lets they're holiday lets so they're all pretty small uh, it's a bit frustrating but also why is it a nice area it's like my mate steve uh, he's actually living one two floors up and one across um he sold his villa up in san Luis. i've done the video of it before he's moved here as well because he likes it here 
that's that's the point. La Mata's nice. It's a nice place to live. It's like when we we had Wayne and Eva over from the US because they'd seen some of the Spanish videos and they come here and they fell in love with the place. They were quite enjoying the way life is here. You have a proper market, you have fresh baked bread, you have a professional butcher, um, you have a normal, we've got green grocers and all that sort of stuff. It's like a village type of life. And this is the thing, these, this is nice, this is nice. You get up, you can go and walk on the beach. When it's warm, you can go for a swim. You can go over the, the park, you know, it's just on our doorstep. But you're still within a stone throw of two large hospitals. You've got the clinics, the schools are nearby, the schools pick up the kids with a school bus. It's a nice place to live. There isn't what I would call crime in any sense. I'm not saying there isn't crime, but there is certainly nothing um, major. You know, I know from Worcester, UK, heroin's a big problem. We don't really have any of that sort of stuff here. I'm not saying it doesn't go on. Um, I'm just saying you don't really see it. Uh, where in Worcester, it, it has an impact, it increases the burglary, etc., etc. It is a big problem. Um, but this is a bit of a bubble. Everybody knows everybody and, you know, everyone sort of looks out for each other. And that's what I like here. It's a nice place to live. Um, so, yeah, this is why I struggle to move somewhere else. Because we can process the paperwork quicker by going north. Um, but at the same time, we love it here. And long term, we're where we want to be. Um, the van is actually in much better condition than it was. I've got a Volkswagen mechanic that actually does the work on it now. Um, he's from the UK, been out here I think 18 years. Um, but it's already had some upgrades done to it. I mean, it's got a new set of alloys on it now. Um, but there is like a clink in sound on the gear change. And what I found out is these guys here, the local guys, um, where the gear knob interchanges, they had basically cut a piece of Coca-Cola can and put it into the slot instead of buying the, what do you call it, the, uh, I can't remember what you call them off the top of my head, but basically it's just a piece of like rubber ice, it, it just it's for the linkage. Um, they had, they'd used Coke can instead, and that's why it's going clink, 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 because it's bloody a Coke can instead of the, the actual rubber. Um, but also, we had a bit further along, a bit of hose pipe had been put over with some kind of clip for the main cheer changer to the gearbox, um, which just needed a ball cox. And all you need to do is, well, it's a little ball, you heat it up and then just push it on there and that's it. Um, very stupid small things and it just, this is why I recommend the mechanic I'm with now and I would never recommend this guy here. Um, I'm not saying who he is in case somebody complains, but it's one of the local ones, and there ain't many. Um, so I've had that done. Uh, what else have I had done? Our new thermostat. Um, so the engine's running a lot better. It seems to be running a lot faster. Um, Speed-wise, it seems to be doing about 20 kilometers faster than it was. Get, you know, pickup speed, etc. So it's running well. Um, next thing is we're going to look at um, a new throttle cable and a few other bits and pieces. Uh, new bumpers, get new bumpers put on there as well. So it's getting tidied up. I'm going to respray it eventually. Uh, but one of the things, a bit of a warning, is the ITV, which is their MOT road, uh, what do they call it, like road proficiency, road, uh, what do they call it, uh, this sort of like road safety, so your vehicle's compliant with being on the road, 
is no alterations to the vehicle. What that really means is literally, if it's not in their document, they may not um, let you have it on the vehicle, which is sort of like, Ooh, I've got that solar panel. I didn't think it'd be an issue. But talking to some of the mechanics, they said they've had people take roof racks off. They've had people take the bull bars and other things off um, Land Rovers and Range Rovers that come factory fitted with them because they're not on the document. So that's due at the end of this month. So I'll let you know how that goes because um, I really don't want to take the solar panel back off. <laughs> uh, but if it does come off, there'll be some bolts going on there so I can take it off and put it in a fast fix. But yeah, alterations, be very wary of. Um, solar solar tinted windows, I've got to have like a hologram, I think, there, or there's a document that says it's been done. Um, you have to take it to one of these approved places to get them to approve your... Um, tinted windows that's how they'll do it this is this is the problem in spain some of this stuff you go there no problem whatsoever somebody else goes and go oh no we don't do that and it's like but but matt was here tuesday and he didn't have any problems no we don't do that you you've got to have it tinted by us that's not tinted by us you know you get sometimes you're like what <laughs> but somebody was here yesterday with it yeah no it couldn't have been here and it's like yeah but it was so things are going pretty well work wise it's going pretty well um, we're just waiting for another batch of work to come through fingers crossed that goes through because that will carry me through till probably April of next year um, and if that continues I could be up to four years so we'll wait and see the reason that I sort of say wait and see on that is because of the bit I do, um, the quality of the current surveyors have improved a lot. Um, so sorting their paperwork out isn't as difficult as it once was. Um, also, the number of people doing it has been reduced because it's coming to the end of this first batch. So where we had 30 surveyors, we've sort of dropped down to 11 at the moment, but also people doing the stuff I do has been reduced as well. I'm the only person doing it now. So I'm fingers crossed. That just continues. Um, because I, I like doing I like working from home. And I'll be honest with you, the advantage of this is when I sit here and I go, okay, well I get up in the morning, have breakfast, start work, have lunch with the wife, um, get back to work, pick kids up from school, do another hour for work, and that's that's pretty much most of my working day. You know, I get to spend time with the April and the kids. When I'm in the UK, I don't have that luxury. Um, so it's nice doing that. It's nice that we can keep it going, which is why I'm also looking, I mentioned, I think I mentioned, I'm looking at doing a de uh, degree at the moment because I'm trying to upgrade some of my qualifications to try and develop a more of a home-based role um, along with trying to get everything else going. The, the English teaching stuff, I'm still working on at the moment. Um, Mark's doing okay in, in the Philippines, but I think we need to move away from the reliance we have on one of the schools we work with at the moment and try and develop more of our own system sounds difficult or sounds easy depending on how you look at it but it's mainly getting people to buy into it because i think once you get the initial ticking over when people go oh that worked well blah 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 it suddenly all starts kicking in you know because it goes from one or two people and thinking is this worth the time and then they tell their friends and then they go okay we've got 10 people and then suddenly you go hang on a minute we've got too many people now um but also we've got the group lessons there we're working on as well so there's a lot of stuff going on it's just having enough time to fit it all in which is why i'm sort of like youtube's sort of pushed to one side it's n it's not um a negative thing it's more a case of there's not a lot to um discuss you know i can't sit there and show you exactly what i'm doing because hey 
a lot of it is boring, but B, a lot of it um, isn't really relevant to most people. Because the stuff we're doing with the English teaching, unless you're actually doing the English teaching or interested in doing it, it's not really going to make much interest or, or benefit to you. But at the same time, there's other channels on this channel which are sort of broken down into different subcategories. Um, which is another thing I'm thinking about is concentrating more on the how-to sort of stuff because I like doing more technical stuff when I can. And the Philippine sort of stuff is, like I said, for me, a lot of it's been covered now. So unless people actually bring more questions, it's difficult to actually keep things interesting. You know, for me, I get bored as much as anybody else. So going over the same topics isn't really useful for anybody. It doesn't mean it will stop. It just means that if someone says, Matt, what about this? Um, then I'll go, okay, well, that this is what I think on that or this is the fact about that. It's a bit like property rentals. I've had a few people contact me about renting properties in the Philippines. My properties are fully booked. Um, I've got tenants in there long term. Um, one of the problems I have at the moment to make another one vacant is where to put my motorcycle because I want to keep it dry. Um, I don't want it out to the elements where it could start the potential to rust because although my in-laws will look after it, it's much better just keeping it indoor if, if I can. Um, so moving it out somewhere else um, is an issue because there's a unit there available or I can move my stuff from my other unit or I can finish off the one upstairs. I mean, one of the problems I've got with the one upstairs now is the units underneath are rented out. So I can't really be banging around upstairs getting the, the floor leveled and stuff now because there's people already living downstairs. So that sort of put a damper on that. But what neighbors in front, I've started constructing some more properties. My neighbors behind, I've got a one bedroom apartment for rent. Um, the one bedroom apartment is 10,000 pesos plus bills. Um, it's newly constructed. It's got a billiard table as well. Um, that's the going rate in our area. That's that, that's the thing. You know, I've had people say, oh, well, we can get it cheaper elsewhere. You can do. It, it's just the where we are, there's not a lot of properties available, which is why we quite happily keep the rates as they are. Um, but also, you don't get the internet. Um, what do you call it? You've got the internet, cable TV. We've got external water tanks as well, so even when there's water off, we've still got water. Um, it's like a friend of mine, we, he rented for, I think, about three months. Um, he didn't notice that there was no electric shower because the water tank's 20 foot in the air, so it heats up in the morning. So when he went for a shower, it was hot water from the tank because we'd put it up there for that reason, so it's actually heated by the sun. But the, the point being is, it's all those little bits that you may not get in elsewhere. Um, but I'm not going to argue if you can find somewhere better or cheaper or more expensive. Well, that's real estate, you know, that's how it works. There's just, you know, you either find somewhere ideal or you find something that's not. And it, I know um, a couple of people moved around a lot. Because um, they stopped in one place for three, four months, then they'd have something like didn't like the roosters, fell out with the neighbours or whatever. So then they moved around again. Um, so it's all about what, what makes you happy. Uh, and that's the way I look at it. Now, one of the things, uh, while I mention it, is I've got a new camera. Um this is a 360 camera so i can take a photo with this and it'll photograph the entire room but then when you view it um you can actually see the whole room uh if you it's probably more in the u.s market but in the u.s market you know when you do a walkthrough uh in a property with a 360 
that's what that does. You can actually stitch the rooms together so you can walk through a property and view all the rooms. Um, that's that's my new gadget this week because um, my birthday is coming up and that was my birthday treat. Um, but yeah, I like it so far. Um, I did some videos and stuff and been testing it out uh, outside at night. Um, picture ain't too bad at night, but it's not a hundred percent. But what we'll do it, you know? I think the that's a crazy thing, you know. When you think that three hundred and fifty dollars in the UK, I think it's three hundred and fifty pounds. It's a bit of a rip off. The dollar to pound ratio, um, which is why a bit of advice: if you got a friend from the US going to the Philippines and you want something check the US prices because it may be better getting them to bring it with them <coughs> because they'll get it cheaper especially electronics or camera lenses and things like that it's cheaper in the US than the UK um, I think Hong Kong prices have gone up in the last 12 months as well for the cost of lenses a lot of stuff um, my father buys a lot of camera gear and I think some of the prices are starting to go up. Maybe some pressure from the manufacturers. I'm not sure. Uh, but anyway, yeah, everything's going okay. But I thought I'd do this video. And yes, it's a bit long. It's nearly half an hour. But I wanted to cover more subjects. Um, some people, ah, I'm, the trolling stuff that goes on. I'll just cover that as a last note because I'll be honest, I don't even think about it. I don't really care what these people do. Um, the reason being is it's A, it's all lies and fake, but B, what do they actually achieve? Nothing. Um, it's just all a bit strange, you know, but it's part of the internet these days. Um, I'm sure these people wouldn't say anything in front of somebody's face because they'd probably have their um, front teeth removed because it also doesn't fit in with their persona. They're not confrontational people in a face-to-face -face situation. Um, so I don't really waste my time on it. Um, so when somebody mentioned, oh, people are talking about you being killed or dead, it's like, I don't care. Um, the fact that these people even discuss that sort of thing actually turns around and says to me they actually know virtually nothing about me whatsoever. Um, and also when they talk about knowing people they know and also they obviously don't because people I know communicate with me on a daily basis. People I know have got access to things that actually say where I am most of the time. So it's it's just a bit weird why people would waste so much of their time on such pointless garbage. But anyway, part of life, part of having a YouTube channel, part of the way people are. Um, some people, not all people. Um, and that's one of the things people need to understand is... I don't expect everybody to agree with me and I don't expect to agree with everybody else but at the same time not everybody has to talk to each other um, and it's not um, the easiest way of putting this is a lot of time a lot of stuff is simply not relevant um, like arguing with somebody about Hillary and um, what's her name Clinton or whatever I couldn't care less. Um, so I have no interest in it whatsoever. So somebody going, oh, well, this is this. I don't care. I'm not interested. Uh, you know, it's not me being negative or anything. I simply have no interest in it whatsoever. It's the same when people argue about the cost of living in the Philippines. It's such a broad spectrum of things that you can't actually say 100% <coughs> this fits all. The reality is, this would fit Joe Blogs, and this would fit Joe, Joe, whatever. Um, but the point is, they may argue because they're going, well, I spend this, and they're you have different ways of life. 
Um, the, that's why the one, the one I did, I covered the fact of the minimum, the absolute minimum, because I think that is the absolute minimum. Um, because below that, you start to suffer with the fact you can't afford uh, basic medical cover, you can't afford to be ill, you can't afford to um, have something go wrong where you need to go home or something because you've got no money for an airfare and all that sort of stuff. That's why I said, that's that level. And then you'll get, I know I get other people, oh, well, I couldn't live on that. I don't know. I'm not asking you to live on it. I don't live on it. But the point is, that's what I would say the absolute minimum was. And that's what I'm talking about. When people get into these disputes of it, it's like, why are you even arguing? Um, sit and do the maths. Do, add it all up. It's, it's not difficult. So, I just want to cover a few topics. Um, and I thought, well, you know what? I'm going to go to bed now. And I have an update for a while, so this is a bit of a long one. But I've covered a lot of the stuff that's been going on. Um, thanks for watching, and have a great week. Thanks for watching.